All right, so if you like the channel that is uplifting the name of Jesus Christ and it's also spreading the true gospel of Jesus Christ, by all means, click on the like, comment, share, and also subscribe, okay? So that way, and hit the um the bell bell too. Um, anybody that is, you know, you're, you know, in, you tune in the most, I ain't gonna say faithful and all that, because don't be faithful to me. Be faithful to the Lord, okay? I just, you know, when, you know, win so many souls for Christ. That's about it, okay? Plain simple then. Now normally, I mean I do do this on this channel, but this is gonna be a daggone dog on super de duper rebuke. If you don't know where I got the word super de duper from, I was a Barney girl when I was a little girl, so I ain't gonna rebuke Barney, y'all. I'm about to rebuke these celebrities now normally i do it but it's about to be a good bit and a grandma i'm about to um rebuke because i don't know and then I, i'm just gonna keep it real and honest i don't know whether i should call kurt franklin a gospel artist because i won't be honest i'm gonna keep it real on the one twos and threes i don't I, I can't call him a brother. I, I can't call him a brother. But I do fear for his soul. I fear for his soul and his well being. But at the same time, you know, I just can't call him a brother. But he is constantly showing everybody that he truly wants to be a part of the world. And. It is beyond sad to have him, Usher, and Tyler Perry. By the way, Tyler Perry getting the rebuke, too. I don't know if y'all know this, but Tyler Perry made a post. And I discovered that post. And he was talking about his new series, Black and Beauty. Y'all, when I say it's dark, I didn't watch it, though. I watched the trailer, and from where I seen everybody and their grandmama talking about on Facebook, what that what that show is about, y'all. I don't mean no harm. One of the actors low key looked like Denzel Washington, so at first I thought Denzel was in the movie. I thought to have a Pam moment from Martin when she was when she thought that African man was Denzel. I about to scream Denzel, but I'm gonna keep it real. Something was like go and see who all the casting are. So I went to go see who all the casting was, and thank God Denzel Washington was not in the movie. I thank God for that. But my point on the matter is this: there's a lot I gotta say, a a lot, and then plus Beyonce she getting rid of rebuke too. Beehive, I'm gonna be honest, y'all really need Jesus because you are. Really, idolizing a witch. And this witch is just hypnotizing you with her enticing words, with her music, everything that she is doing. Now realize that everything that's in the dark is about to come into the light. And I'm not talking about what y'all doing. I mean, I'm not talking about whatever deep, dark things y'all got. Well, didn't get it. Take it or leave it. But I'm talking about y'all listening to Beyonce. And I didn't hear all of the speech, but the one thing that, and I am going to probably make another part two on the whole Beyonce situation, God's willing, but I'm going to keep it real on the ones, the twos, and the threes. From what I was, from what I read in the comments, is that not only was she alone, but she was not alone, but... Apparently, Kelly Rowland came out with her, and they were both wearing suits, and they were holding hands, and one person on Facebook saying she was getting that they were promoting lesbianism, and it was something else that was being promoted, and I was like, oh, now I think about it. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm going to have to look back at the video myself, but there's one part of the video that stood out, and Beyonce said this, talking about our ancestors are putting up a prophecy. I'm sorry, it's dead. Lord, forgive me for saying that. The ancestors are gone. And it's not your ancestors that are doing the talking. It is familiar spirits. It's demons. 
Those are demons. And it, I'm like this. If someone has not told y'all then that whenever you have, you know, people that are dead and gone in your dreams. I'm going to tell y'all something. This is why I had to stop writing about my best friend. I had to stop writing about him for me. Oh, I had to stop writing about him altogether. Because one, I was holding on to him. I was grieving for like five years. Do I miss my friend? Yes, I do. But at the end of the day, I'm just praying my best friend is in glory with Christ. Period. Do I miss my auntie that went on to glory? Yes. Do I miss my uncle? I do. I shouldn't be having dreams about people, which I haven't in a minute, I'm be honest, and I thank God for that. But I shouldn't be thinking, you know, they're trying to tell me something, tell me something. No. Mm-mm. And then I come on stage and I say something like, you know, my auntie was in my dream the other night and she told me this, she told me that. No. No. Because I don't need to tell y'all what a demon told me, a familiar spirit told me. It's trying to come in the form of my auntie or the form of my best friend or the form of my uncle. I don't need that, period. And neither do y'all. But anyway, I'm about to get to my whole point. So... And I'm going to talk about all these celebrities that are hyping on Kamala's train. How do you say this woman's name? I'm going to be honest. I'm talking about her first name. Anyway, I'm just going to keep it real on the one, twos, and the threes. So I'm going to say what I need to say. Because I just found out that Sierra is going to be there as well. Like, literally. She's going to be there as well, so. Yep. Anyway. Oh, and I will say go out and vote. Go out and vote, but be wise about who you're voting for. Because I'm telling you something. I am not voting for Kamala. I'm not voting for her. Because when she performed... The 25 sacrifices, child sacrifices to Molak. I was mad. And got me routed up. I wasn't going to go for the hell for no way. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't going to go for her. But I am going to keep it real. Now let me get back to what I got to say. Before I lose all track. Anywho. So. Um, we all know Usher is doing his tour concerts and whatnot. But, um, in one of the shows, Tyler Perry was there, and believe it or not, Kurt Franklin was there, too. I mean, it's sad enough if an R&B artist is bringing out, I need that, uh, oh, I need the word, I need the word. Lukewarm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bringing out a lukewarm gospel artist. Gospel music is supposed to have the message about the cross. Last time I checked, message about Jesus Christ. But we have a gospel artist and a secular artist. Now, here's the thing. Usher's concerts were very, from what I've been told, they were very, very... um. I need the word, y'all. Yeah, I, I, I've been ready for this all day, to be honest. But they were very provocative, very explicit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They were. Ve- I'm not saying thank you, Holy Spirit, for you know these things happening, but I'm just saying thank you for helping me with the word because the Holy Spirit is helping me right now, and I need to get this off my chest, y'all, because enough is enough. But anyway, it was to the point Tyler Perry was there and Usher decides to bring out the Magic City dancers. Also known as strippers, dancing on strip pole. I mean, it was very, very pro- provocative. And Tyler Perry is throwing Usher butts at the stripper. And this is the same concert that. Kurt Franklin is at, by the way. So let me get on to Kurt first before I get on to the other two. 
because and what I'm going to say is that matter of fact, all of them are actually endorsing Kamala Harris. They all are endorsing her, which is the very saddest thing of all because one thing about these celebrities, they are puppets. They are lost souls and they all need Jesus Christ because they, they don't have free will to make decisions on their own. Mm-mm, no. But Tyler Perry has a new um, show. Well, anyway, Usher has said at one of the rallies for Kamala Harris, he said, I love you all, but I love Kamala more. To me, that's idolizing, and that is supporting someone whose agenda is all about child sacrifice. And it is beyond sad. I mean, very beyond sad. And then to have the high priestess, Beyonce herself, yes, she is a witch. Take it or leave it. I don't care who and their grandma feelings get bad because I said this about Beyonce. If you don't pay attention now, if you don't come out of the trance, if you don't wake up now, if you don't let the veil fall from your face, you are going to continue to allow the enemy to take you further and further and further and further away from the truth. Because, because why would the high priestess come out to promote and tell y'all to vote for another witch in training? Because that's the way I see it. And it's so sad that there are so many people worshiping and idolizing Beyonce like she is some type of candy bar, and she's not. And then talking about, oh, our ancestors talk. No, no, no. Those are demons talking because you are worshiping the leader of the demon, Satan himself. And being used by him. And yet you want to say. Uh, and deceive the mass. I'm going to say that. Deceive the masses. That's the ancestors. No. The dead are gone. But yet the dead has not even come up from out of their sleep. To be honest. And what I'm saying that is so many people are asleep. And they're spiritually dead. That they don't have the discernment or they don't have the Holy Spirit to discern that, hey, Beyonce's a witch. Beyonce's here trying to entice everybody to vote for Kamala Harris, who is also a witch. Like I said, I'm going to watch this whole thing with Beyonce, everything that she said. I'm going to make a part two on this. So you best believe it, what I'm going to say. Everybody ain't going to like it. I don't care who like it. I don't care who doesn't like it. Because it's not about me anyway. It's about Christ being uplifted up. Because Christ is king. And Christ is Lord. Period. Anyway. Like I said. These are the ones that are endorsing her. Like I said. She doesn't have any good. Kamala does not have any good policies. She does not have anything good. Nothing good. And I mean, she doesn't have anything good. But child sacrifice, which is abortion. And I wish somebody would say, well, that's not child sacrifice. That's a woman's choice. No, it's not. It's murder. And that baby's life at the time, it's a little bitty peanut. By the time it's a little bitty peanut, it's still life. It got to grow. It got to eat while it's inside the womb. It got to move around to let mommy know, hey, I'm active. I'm about to be an auntie again. God's willing. And that baby inside my sister's room is just moving. Moving. And I'm praying for a safe. And I mean a safe. Delivery. But anywho, what am I tell you? Not only 
did Beyonce had to do her thing. Now Sierra's on board. Now I re- y'all already know my history with me idolizing Sierra. I don't idolize her anymore. And I have a like, looky little respect for her as a wife, to be honest. And there's a reason why. What she puts on is like she's screaming, I never left a lifestyle. I never left um, wanting to be the wife of a rapper when I'm really the wife of a football player who deserves mad respect and mad love. Because guess what? If a good man comes along, you best believe I'm going to have reverence for my husband. You best believe I'm going to have some reverence for my husband. Because one... I'm going to tell you something. What goes on at work stays at work. When it's time to come home, it's time to be a wife. Yes, she's endorsing for Kamala too, so it does not surprise me. But I'm like this. I'm trying to figure out what in the world... Can Kamala offer anybody nothing? What can she offer anybody? Nothing. But anyway, let me get back to Tyler Perry. So he made this show. I'm thinking it's a movie, by the way. It's a show called Black and Beauty. I don't know how many series it's going to be. Like, if it's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know. I don't care because I don't watch his stuff. But he made a post talking about. You know, whenever he gets a number one, like a number one spot for making something and producing something, he gets more and more humble. But we all know that Tyler Perry likes to write about black pain. He wants to write about black pain, single mother struggling or single father struggling, a woman getting abused, um, all that. So in this one... I'm going to be honest. Nobody wants to see about pain all the time. This is why whenever I write the characters I write about, and I even had to do some evaluation of myself. I was like, you know, Lord, I'm trying to make sure that, you know, when I'm writing my characters and I'm writing my stories, I don't want to promote black pain. A lot of times I'm not promoting it, but like with my first series, it was some black pain because divorce was one of them. But she didn't automatically get back with someone, but, you know, because she was so concerned about it. But y'all know the series. Go ahead and read it. Love don't come use part one, but I'm not here to promote. But anyway, this one was just, when I say Roundtree was a capital R, I mean Roundtree was a capital R because I didn't, like I said, I didn't see it, but I seen what people were saying, like, it was a whole bunch of homosexual scenes in there. Whole lot of it, it was just nasty. Fornication. He's he's really really big. He okay. Like I'm not gonna trip, and I definitely ain't gonna lie. But <sighs> Diary of a Mad Black Woman, the movie. That was one movie I know everybody in their grandma loved. I mean, granted, we all hated what Charles did, but I'm like this: the actor that played Charles did a scene. The actor that played, the actress that played Helen, granted she did her thing, but I'm going to tell you this. People still, and this is why it's so dangerous in a way, I think, when you watch some of his stuff, people still have not forgiven the actor that plays Charles. They still have not forgiven him. They still have not forgiven um, Richard T. Jones, Michael Beach. If y'all don't know who Michael Beach is, Michael Beach played in Soul Food and Waiting to Exhale, committing the same thing. But I was like, you know what? None of these men have not done a thing to me. And I'm going to be honest. I can't hate somebody that's acting or doing a part for a movie. I can't really hate that because I'm like, they have not done anything to me. It just doesn't make any sense to hate someone that has not done anything to you. I'm just keeping it real. On the one, twos, and threes. I'm being honest. But 
<sighs> yeah. It, it, you know, this is why you got to be careful what you watch and what you view. Because even what you read sometimes, too, because... Uh, yeah. I'm not saying... Well, that's another topic for another day. But anyway, my point is this. Yeah, I remember when he came out with the plays. It was like humble beginnings. Because everybody, to me, loved those plays more than they actually loved the movies, to be honest. But he went from theatrical to produce it. Because I'm going to be honest and keep it real. The first two movies he made, and I'm going to tell you, the other Medea movie I loved, that I used to love watching, Medea Goes to Jail. I look, okay, for some odd reason, I don't know why I liked it. <laughs> but I'm still trying to figure out why Keisha Knight Pullman played a prostitute. I'm still trying to figure that out. Why she could play anybody else, but then again, yeah. But anyway, I'm about to say the first three movies that he made, the first three Medea movies he made, and then I'm gonna be honest, they weren't raunchy. They were not raunchy. I'm gonna be honest. But, granted, I will say this. I am more outspoken about men wearing dresses and all that. He could have found anybody to play Medea, to be honest. He could have found anybody to play Medea. And I'm just going to keep it real. It's not right for a man to wear a dress. I don't care how popular it may seem. What's popular is not right. What's popular is not right. I'm going to keep it real on one, two, threes. What's popular is not always right. But I'm just going to say this. He should have never changed. But when you come into Hollywood and you start playing games, yes, you got to do what Satan wants. If you're trying to get to the top, what I'm trying to say when it comes down to Hollywood, but when I saw what I saw, I was like, you know, I'm kind of a little upset that when I'm reading in the comments and reading his post, it's, it's like he had to change because I'm going to tell y'all something and then I'm going to leave it alone after this. This past weekend, I was, um, I was in one of the groups on Facebook, and the ladies were asking about, was there some Christian stores that got, like, spice in them? I kid you all not. And I'm like, what? I was like, you guys want to read about fornication? You guys want to read about fornication? Talking about, well, they rap in Christ, but they got some spice, too. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. But here's the thing. So I kind of promoted my book. Now, here's the thing. There's no spice unless the couples are married. Majority of my work is clean. Book 13 is clean all day, every day. Book 13 is clean. <laughs> but Love Don't Come Easy Part 2 and 3. You Are the Reason. Love Will Find a Way Part 1. I think if there's a new. That's it. <laughs> Those are the ones that got the spice in it. Because guess what? The couples are married. I only write about sex if the couples are married. Now here's the thing. I still keep the sex scenes to a minimum. Granted, I know how to write a sex scene without being all explicit. But like I said, it's I'm not gonna call it a sex scene. I'm gonna call it a love scene because it's between a husband and a wife. They're making love. They're not <clears throat> they're not doing all this other stuff but and I'm not trying to brag but 78 women came forth and they were so happy after that and I was I said I gotta remain humble 
this is what you call one to remain humble. Now, granted, I'm not promoting spice, but I'm going to say this. The only time my characters get a little spicy is if they're married. Period. That's it. I'm not, and there's a reason why I'm promoting love scenes in the books. Because I want my readers to know it's best to do it when you're married. Do things God's way. Do things the Lord's way. Do things His way. But at the end of the day, I'm still preaching in them stores. The only, if there's one thing I had to change, it would be the tone. It would be the tone because I'm not going to lie to nobody and grandma. I actually had missed writing sex scenes. But if I, had, if I wanted to write them, they had to be by God's design of love and marriage between a husband and a wife. Like I said, it's not raunchy when you read them. It ain't raunchy. Mm-mm. And my book with the most one is book 16. So I'm warning y'all. If y'all feel like a little uncomfortable because there's too many, y'all think I'm writing just to write? No. Mm-mm. But I just, I just want to let y'all know that. That's all. And normally, when the couple is married and it's about that couple, one time. Okay? That's it. But I'm not showing... <sighs> I'm not going to show an entertainment scene where there's a whole bunch of Jezebels. They're gyrating their hips or all that other stuff. They're half naked and nude and all that because I'm like this. I see more fornication being said. That I'm, I'm speaking biblically and spiritually over here. It's sad that a lot of these authors get the most pages read and get to the top because they are using the enemy's device, which is sin. To get to the top whenever they write it. And I'm like, okay. What about a slow burn? And it's a soft romance. It's clean. Because nowadays people want unhinged men. Ain't nobody unhinged in my stories. Uh uh-uh. Because if you think about it. An unhinged man is close to abuse. He's very possessive. He's very. I mean, I read some stuff that I. I'm like, what is wrong with these men? Like, it's some stuff I don't even want to talk about. I'm not saying I read it in the book, but I've seen, like, some posts where they were talking about unhinged men and, like, the unhinged men that they, you know, wish were real sometimes. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? But y'all want to talk about myself being too preachy and all that. But it's okay. But my point is this. If there's one thing that has kept me humble, it was that post and the reaction that I got because, like I told them, I said, my I said, the couples are married. I said, they're not out here just hopping around each other bed and whatnot, and they all ain't married. No. But it, it's sad when you have to change. Like I said, the only thing if you asked me I really had to change was the tone. The tone, and I really had to change the message. Because if you read any of my other work, if you read my early works, I wasn't too preachy. Until later on when I started being submissive to Christ. From book 9 all the way to 17. Your girl is telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I shouldn't have to, like, I'm I'm keeping this real. When you do the Lord's work, I mean, I'm taking a prime good example. Look at C.C. Winans. Look at C.C. Winans, for instance. And I I do admire C.C. Winans. C.C. It's standing very firm on the word. Like, there was a time she talked about Whitney Houston um, wanted her to do a song talking about Cassie Spell. She's like, I'm not going to do that. And Whitney said, oh, I knew you was going to tell me no. But she was talking about they did another song together that me and my mom actually loved. The Count on Me song. And we, that went to way next hill, by the way. But, oof, that song had to do with friendship. And a lot of time, the Lord, in the word of God, it talks about friendship. It talks about friendship. Believe it or not, it talks about friendship. Not just with each other, but, you know, us having that true and authentic relationship with Christ. 
You know, that's an old hymn that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Well, if we're going to consider Jesus a friend, we need to be investing our time and energy. Focusing on him, seeking him with a whole heart, mind, and soul. Because at the end of the day, how can we love someone if we're just only half behind putting in the work? If we're not seeking him each and every day. If we don't have a pure heart and true intentions. But, again, you shouldn't, I, I really said enough is enough from these celebrities, because I've had enough. I'm going to continue to pray for their souls. I ain't done yet, but I'm just speaking what I need to speak on, because I'm like this. If you were teaching a message, like teaching a good message in early work, why change now? Because... Then again, I know the answer because the enemy's time is running short. It's running out. And you know what? A lot of people are still going to idolize Tyler Perry. They're going to still idolize Kurt Franklin. They're going to still idolize um, Usher, Beyonce the most. Because when it's a person that has the highest following, let me tell y'all something. I'm just going to keep it real. When I say this, it does not matter. It does not matter how many people like you, follow you. If you're not speaking the truth, God is going to hold you accountable. And then there was something in my head. I said, I was so content with those 78 women. That decided, you know, that were content with what I posted and all that. I didn't need a million followers. I did not need a million reviews because if I need a million posts, I mean, a million views, a million, um, you know, likes, loves, all that. Obviously, I must be a witch. I'm gonna keep it real, and I'm gonna tell you why. You gotta think about it. Beyonce entices people, entices people with her words and her moves, like her music everything and she only pops around whenever she got um a new album coming out that concert i'm sorry if you have to pay two thousand dollars just to go to a concert something is wrong i I ain't gonna lie i need that in my bank account (laughs) and just to save not to go around shopping or anything I only just shopping for my necessities, but that's about it. But my point is this. It's like she knows when to come out and when not to come out because it's not like she's on social media all the time. Only when something is going good. Now, granted, even when I don't have a book, I'm on social media from time to time to time. But a lot of the time, I'm just here to say what I need to say. I'm not using my social book media to promote the books all the time because I'm going to be honest. I care more about souls than I do books. I care more about the souls than I do the books. But it, it's sad when Beyonce is a part of something, everybody and their grandma rushing it. But when somebody tries to tell the truth that it's going to save your soul from hellfire, everybody want to tune it out. But guess what? I'm going to still speak it. I'm going to still tell the truth. It's like sin wants to make it to be the new norm. There is nothing special about sin. There is nothing cute about sin. There's nothing cute about it. There's not even nothing entertaining about it. Could you imagine? Could you imagine just living in sin? Day in and day out. Like you wake up. First thing you want to do is just lie. The first thing you want to do is um, call up your sneaky link and get a quickie from them. 
or you want to um that's another one. You want to just drink, 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 drink until you drunk throughout the whole day. Yes, getting drunk is a sin. Now there are some people that can control their liquor and can control the wine. I know when I had my first drink, I still think about when I had my first drink. That's why I don't drink now. Now, I, like I told you, I was using alcohol as a clutch. I ain't going to lie to nobody and their grandma I used it as a clutch. Because of what my mother told me. My ex had approached her. I got mad. And I told the lady, I said, look. And I didn't even want the wine at first, y'all. I ain't going to lie. I told her, I said, look, I need you to put the water inside the champagne glass. She go back and giggle. I like, come back out with a glass of water and the glass of champagne. I'm like, you didn't understand what I said. By the way, I'm in Europe, by the way, when this happened. So someone was like, never, never give in a peer pressure. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, granted, I was with someone that I could trust. Battle buddy wise, but I'm like, whew. At first, I didn't want, so I tasted it a little bit. I'm like, this tastes like bad medicine. So why do people want to drink? But it wasn't to the fact I got drunk. I got a little loud. I got loud, and I noticed. I'm like, why am I getting loud? I'm getting tucked up. But. That's why I stopped drinking. It wasn't to the fact I was getting buzzed or drunk. But I just saw a different person. I did not want to ever. I don't ever want to become again. Now am I. Going to condemn alcohol? I'm not. But I just choose not to drink. Am I going to condemn y'all for drinking? And I, I can't condemn y'all. But I can um encourage you not to um drink to get drunk. And there are other ways you can have fun without, you know, wanting to get drunk. <laughs> there are. there. Are, you can have a good time without the alcohol as well. Because not everything's for you know, drinking that, drinking that. Yeah. <clears throat> but my point of the matter is, is this what I'm trying to say. <sighs> Enough is enough. It is idolizing. It's time for everybody to wake up. It's time for people to wake up. It's, it's, it's time. It's time for everybody to wake up. Because darkness is being promoted. The kingdom of darkness is being promoted. Because I, there's nothing that Kamala has I won't. I'm just keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real because at the end of the day, if abortion is all her is all she think about, <sighs> my heart goes out to the little kids. They go out to the ones that are voiceless. Because, right, you know, kids can't vote until they reach 18. By the way, I'm going to be honest. This is my first time voting. I'm not going to tell y'all my age, by the way. But this is my first time voting. And I said, I'm not going to allow a Jezebel to sit in the office. That's something I don't want it to happen. Because those 25 innocent souls, they didn't have nobody to defend them. They didn't have a voice of their own. And when I say it was beyond sad, it was very, very, very beyond sad. Like, very sad with a capital... Yes, and I, when I say I was angry, I was righteously angry. Like, Lord, you know I love children. Now, that's not saying I'm going to go out there and hunt the kids. No, I don't do that. I really, really love kids. 
I really do. I got a ton of God children. And I'm not trying to brag, but I do. I have a ton of God children because, you know, and basically just started off for me, you know, having a little conversation with them, to be honest, when they were babies. But, but one thing I will say, a baby has discernment, so they know when someone has true good intentions for them. But other than that, and I mean, other than that, I mean, I ain't even done yet, because I'm like I said, I gotta review them, but you know, I go hard. I be ready to knock somebody out when it comes to having new babies, y'all. Uh, I ain't playing. But I ain't trying to be carnal either. Or act out in the flesh. But I go hard for kids. I do. I, I love children. But my point is this we have to be mindful. We have to be mindful because there is nothing, nothing, and I mean nothing, pretty about abortion. I know a lot of people are going to get mad about that, especially a lot of women, but no, it's not your body at the end of the day. Because the word of God says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the spirit of the Lord dwelleth therein. So when you're submissive to Christ, it's really his body that he's, it's really his body. Once he starts living inside of you. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, you will not go out there and commit adultery. You will not go out there and commit an abortion. You will not even go out there and commit fornication. Because you can't have Jesus in the world. It's either Jesus or the world. To Tyler Perry, Kurt Franklin, Beyonce, um, Sierra, Usher, Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand because y'all are going to lead a whole bunch of souls to hell if you do not repent. And being on the train and promoting a witch that is out to murder the children, what one of y'all and then y'all got kids. Y'all have children and you're promoting and endorsing a witch that does not love the children. Because if she loved the children, abortion would not be in her policy. How dare y'all? Then you're going to have so much blood on your hands. A lot of y'all proclaiming, oh, this is God. This is, you know, God, this, God, that. How can you proclaim God? Yet you're promoting someone that is endorsing. That is promoting a Abortion, what I'm trying to say. I got a problem with that. I have a big, big, big problem with that. I have a huge problem with that. Because there are women that wish they can have children. But yet there are women that think it's okay just every time they commit fornication and they get pregnant. Abort, abort, abort. No. You have to answer for that. Because that's blood on your hand. Repent. Repent. And I mean repent. Because... Abortion, that has nothing to do with a woman's reproductive rights. You know what reproductive rights is? Letting that little girl grow up to be the woman that she is and quit convincing her that she was actually born a boy. To 
So that way when she grows up and God sends her her husband, they can make fruit. They can produce fruit. But y'all don't want that. Y'all really don't want that. I got a problem with that. Because God's design of marriage is between man and woman. I'll say it again. God's design of marriage is between man and woman. Husband, wife. Two men coming together. They can't produce. Two penises can't produce fruit. Two women coming together. Two vaginas can't produce fruit. Man and woman on that honeymoon night. The penis goes inside the vagina. Penis shoots out the sperm. Sperm travels through the vagina, gets with the fertilized egg, and guess what? They just start coming together and fermenting. Guess what? God's greatest blessing is going to be inside that woman. A child. A baby. Sometimes even two babies. If you know how many spider man ain't going to shoot out, that's all I got to say. But you know what? Y'all need to wake up. Because these celebrities are really pulling the wool over your eyes. They are pulling the wool over your eyes. It is time to wake up. It is time to choose this day, this hour, this minute. Whom ye shall serve. It's time to choose. No more playing around. It's time to get serious. It is time to get serious. It's like really, really time to get serious. I'm sorry I shook it, y'all. I don't know why I shook it, but it's just time to get serious. Enough is enough. Like, when, when are people going to wake up? When are people going to wake up? When are people going to realize these celebrities are just want to drag us down to hell because they want to hell because they don't want to repent. They refuse to repent. They don't have a voice they can hey only there's true freedom in jesus christ i want y'all to know that there's true freedom in jesus christ by the way there's true freedom in jesus christ Like I said, enough is enough. Because the real one will say enough is enough. A true disciple will say enough is enough. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to say it. Enough is enough. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm just sick of sin being promoted. Abomination being promoted. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm really sick of it. I'm not sick of the people. I'm more sick with the spirit that's operating in them. It's time to wake up. It's time to choose this day whom ye shall serve. Excuse me. It's time. We ain't got time to be playing around. Y'all need to wake up. Choose this day whom ye shall serve. Choose it. Because enough is enough. Some of y'all going to come from the beehive. I pray y'all do come from out the coven. Because that's why that is. She calls it a beehive. But it's really, she really enticing other women. And even men to be possessed with the Jezebel spirit. 
that's the thing. Why would y'all want a Jezebel in office? Jezebel might have been beautiful, but she died an ugly death. Could you imagine being a queen, but you got the ugliest spirit? You might got a pretty face, but you got the ugliest spirit. And the people that you try to control, they turn on you. They throw you out the window. And some dogs just come and tear you up. Can you imagine that? Like, literally, can you imagine? You know, it was last season that the Lord delivered me from being a borderline Jezebel. And, you know, I wasn't out here showing my body or anything. What I realized, I was around some Jezebels. And... It's to the fact, and even during that time, I just went and told one of them the truth. I said, hey, you might talk about being God's, you know, chosen one. At the same time, you know, you know, you're coming to acceptance of it. But still, we can't be doing the things if we're God's chosen ones. Like, we're doing, like, out in the world. We can't be dancing in our underwear and all that. I just literally told her, her dad in a DM. But she didn't take him so well. I got blocked. And I was around another one because of the things that she was saying. She didn't want to take accountability. And then once I realized that jealousy and envy was inside of her, I said, God got to go. I can't really talk to you. I had to block her, y'all. So I was like, wow, I was really around some Jezebels. But one thing I can say, and I'm so thankful for the Lord, he'll chastise you. He'll chastise you. But why he's chastising you, I ain't going to lie. If you're really submissive to him, let him clean you up. Let him pluck out what's not of him. Because I'm telling you something, I've been married now for a year. And some change. And I'm keeping it real. I'm doing better than I am now as a wife, than I was as a girlfriend, than I was as a fiance. Because guess what? God does not honor boyfriend and girlfriend. He does not even honor two people getting engaged. He honors marriage. He honors marriage. Period. That's what he honors. But it's between a man and a woman. Husband and wife. That's what he honors. That's what he honors. And yet, I I can't tell people what to write. I can't. But y'all, I... I refuse to read a book that got a nasty scene in it, just for an occasion. I'm like this. That's why everybody keep going back to the same author that just constantly be writing for an occasion. But they wouldn't complain that I'm being preachy. Oh, I'm going to tell you why I'm preachy. I don't know who you listening to when you go to church every Sunday. So I ain't no telling what they telling you. Because what they're telling you in that pulpit might not be the truth. Or the whole truth. So yes, I'm using the very gift that God gave me to tell the truth. I ain't got to have nobody nigger on my blood on my hands. That's how much I fear the Lord. Whew. I mean, enough is enough. It's time to wake up. It's time to come out from among them. And it's time to be set apart. It's time to be set apart. And if you don't want to be set apart, it's on you. It's on you. It's, uh, it's on you. God gives us free will to make a choice, okay? You got to think about it. He's not a dictator. But he allows us to choose whether we're going to serve him or we're just going to you know, live for the world and then 
seven for all eternal damnation. Because guess what? Hell was not created for man. It was created for Satan and his angels. But here's the thing. Satan goes out and deceives people. Thinking that hell is fun. Thinking that it's a party down there and good and well, it ain't no party down there. People are screaming. Can't you imagine hearing the screaming? That's where the torment is at. Everybody and their grandma just screaming and torment. I don't even like it when I hear people scream now. I'm just keeping it real. You Like people be at these concerts, they screaming and whatnot. I don't go to concerts. I'm just keeping it real. Like people just screaming. I mean, it, oh my goodness. I want to say if y'all watch these um, rallies and whatnot, you know everybody and their grandma was screaming when these celebrities were coming out. Wow, wow, and I mean wow, is all I can say. Like, can you imagine hearing the screams and then you wishing that you had the choice to repent? Like, I'm going to be honest and keep it real. This is why every day, every time I wake up, I'll be like, I just want to live right for Christ. I, I'm going to be honest. The things of this world, they can't satisfy you. They cannot sat- satisfy you. They might give you temporary pleasure, but they cannot satisfy you. Jesus can satisfy you. Jesus can make you content. That's why whenever work is done, y'all, I mean, when it's done for the day. I have to, like, I dedicate, like, the rest of my, even my five to nine is past nine over here now. It's already 10 o'clock, but my whole evening time is just really for Christ. I have to pray. I really have to pray. There's no telling if I got to get on and, you know, continue to share posts about, you know, heaven, hell, and all that. Mainly I share posts about hell more than I do about heaven and then more than I do about the books, too. So that tells you something. I care more about your soul than I do about giving y'all a book. I do. And I still care about your soul. I'm going to still tell the truth where it hurts. This is why I even married my husband. Because my husband is blunt. My husband done, is not going to sugarcoat. If a man sugarcoat, that means something. He got some sugar in his tank, if you ask me. I need a man that's not going to be afraid to hurt my feelings. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to cuss me out, because my husband don't cuss me out. He has told me the hard, blank truth, and I had to sit back and think about it. Yep, I did it. I done it. I ain't did anything to disrespect him. But my point of the matter is this. Tell somebody the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. I don't care who gets mad and they marvel. I don't care. Tell people the truth. That's, that's the thing. Don't, don't nobody and their grandma like the truth nowadays. You being too mean, you judging. Okay, I, that's one thing I really hate. I ain't gonna lie to nobody. I hate it when they come with me at it. But let me tell you something. I still keep my mouth shut. Because I was a caller with no argument. But I'll tell you what I do. I will do. Unfriend. Um, block. Because I was a call. Because guess what? If that person can do it one time, that person going to do it again, again, again. But I'm like this. I ain't had people unfriend me because I'm too, I'm too blunt on social media. I'm too outspoken when it comes down about Christ. Somebody got to represent for Christ. God is raising up a remnant, and I already said, Lord, count me in. Count me in. I don't care. Oh, by the way, y'all remember when I told y'all there were 78 women that um that reacted to what I said, right? Okay. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but only four books were bought. So I did not have 78 times 70. I did not have, like, probably... Whatever that number is, I can't even do that. Well, I could do it in my head, but I'm not trying to think of it right now because it doesn't matter. I only have four, four books that were bought. Was I still happy? I was. 
I was. I'm not gonna lie to nobody and their grandma. But it goes to show, even because guess what? I think nine, ten, I did spread more truth about Christ and all that afterwards on my page. So I can't. Let me tell y'all something. Like I told y'all, I don't need everybody in their grandma to like everything I do and everything I say because it's not about me. You will not see my face. You won't see my face on here because it's not about me. Everybody wants, I'm not saying everybody has this, but no. You just won't see my face. You hear my voice, but you ain't gonna, my, you ain't gonna see my face, huh? Because it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not. It's about Jesus at the end of the day. And I'm going to make it all about Jesus. Even when I write these books, I'm going to spread the true gospel. In this book I'm working on right now, I'm writing about the hero actually having, you know, a conversation with the Lord. And guess what? Jesus is not being, what's the word? He's being blunt, though. I ain't gonna lie. He's being blunt. He just told the boy. He said, "I don't give. I said, I don't give everybody everything they want." Now that's the harsh truth, because hey, he didn't give me everything I want. Am I satisfied? Very, very. Because like I said, I would not be seeking this. I would not be doing this if God gave me everything I wanted. That's gonna tell. I, I can't imagine where I would be if He gave me everything I wanted. Probably, there's no tell. I ain't gonna lie. But it ain't about me, y'all. It's really about Christ. And when I get on this channel, like I said, I care about souls. Period. And I wasn't coming on here to brag or anything, but I'm just saying, at the end of the day, and I mean at the end of the day, I just want to be a vessel. Because if I have to change what I'm writing just to get more likes, and guess what? I was basically using Christ's name just to get to where I had to get to. Like, I don't want to do that. No. No, I ain't got time for that. Mm -mm. But I'm going to still be preaching these words, so that's one thing that ain't going to change. I mean, the characters might change because you can't have the same hero in every story. You see what I'm saying? can't have every hero and every heroine in the same character. But the message is still going to get across. I ain't tuning down nothing. Whew, I got to go, y'all. I know I got to get up, but this is what I had to say for tonight because it, it's like I don't want some. I don't want nobody to think I'm jealous of anything because I'm not jealous of the people. Now I ain't gonna lie. I used to be. I used to be the ex I told y'all about. Like I, I couldn't understand why everything was going so good for him, and in all reality, he was just treating me like dirt. Yeah, he was. He was treating me like dirt and all. But as I got, you know, started wanting to grow my relationship with Christ again, and during that time, I was lukewarm. I ain't gonna lie to nobody in their grandma. I was reading the word, and it actually said, don't be jealous of, you know, the enemy. Don't be jealous of these worldly folks. Don't be jealous, period. Because they, they getting their reward and all that. Now, do I want this child to repent? I do. Because I ain't going to wish nobody and their grandma to hell. No. I'm not going to condemn them. But I will rebuke. And I have rebuked. But this is all I have to say about everything. So if you or someone does not have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior, do it now while you have a chance. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until next week. Don't wait until next year. Oh, don't wait. Do it now. Do it now while you have the chance, okay? Do it now, all right? I ain't trying to sing, y'all. I was not trying to sing. I was just, you know, speaking to emphasize on it. Do it now because time is ticking it's winding down and the kingdom of god is at hand okay so that's all i have to say like i said i will god's will and make a part two about the whole beyonce thing yes so may god continue to keep you all may he bless you all be blessed